Welcome back to Centennial Stadium in Victoria, British Columbia for this match, Canada against Jamaica. A couple of lineup changes to tell you about for this Canadian team from the first game. Erin McLeod will take a rest here. Uh, she played against Haiti between the posts and instead it will be Karina LeBlanc, her 22nd cap. 22 years old, plays for the Boston Breakers, so there's one change to talk about, and uh, I don't think that'll make much difference for this Canadian team. Well, one thing that uh, Evan's got to be happy about, he's got two great goalkeepers, and really on any given day, either of them can start, and right now, you've got to play them both and see who's playing better at this point in time and judge their performance and judge who's going to play next. Good decision. You want to get your keepers lots of action, and that's what he's going to do here. And the left-sided defender, there's a change there as well. Randy Hermes is into the lineup in place of Sasha Andrews. Well, when we talked to uh, Evan prior to uh, to the tournament, he did say that he thought Hermes, Rustad, and Nonan were all on par defensively, and he's obviously just trying to see who's working better in that position. He was very happy with uh, Hermes's performance at practice yesterday, which is really great to see. He's he's basing his lineup changes on their performance at practice, and a lot of times, Jerry, that that's not the case with coaches. They tend to like players and, and go by that. All right, here is the lineup then for Canada. As we said, just the two changes to tell you about. So it's LeBlanc and Hermes into this game. Uh, it's a 3-5-2 setup, and of course, lots of striking power up front. Well, you can't complain about Canada's uh, scoring prowess, and that's definitely evident. It was evident in the last game, and we'll see what happens here today. Charmaine Hooper with three goals against Haiti. Christine Sinclair scored four as they ran up the score. 11-1 the final. They even had a goal called back in that game. Midfield, there's five of them, Silvana Bertini, Moscato, Timko, and Chapman, along with Christine Sinclair in an attacking position, feeding Charmaine Hooper and Carl Lang up front. <laughs> Canada in red, moving left to right, of course. Jamaica in the predominantly yellow uniforms. And we are underway here at Centennial Stadium. Once again, if Canada beats Jamaica today, they will automatically qualify for the semifinals. The two semifinals will take place at Safeco Field in Seattle next Wednesday. This is Brittany Timko feeding it forward. Carl Lang swings one across. And already a scoring opportunity for Canada. Starting lineup for Jamaica. We don't know a whole lot about this team. We do know that they lost their first game to Costa Rica by a score of 2-0, but it's a very young team, Helen, with several teenagers here. And they do have a couple of players that play in the United States, number 10, Burwise, and number 7, Wilson. And they're trying to move forward now is Jamaica. Referee for tonight's game is Ave Maria Alpizar from Costa Rica. And a look at the rest of her crew here this evening. Throw in for Jamaica. Ball knocked forward that time by Candace Chapman. And back and forth goes a little bit of ping pong here in the early going. Chapman again sends it forward. Brittany Timko moves up to break that play up. Well, and already we're seeing Jamaica coming out a little bit stronger than Haiti, trying to possess a little bit more of the ball, really pressuring, pressuring the Canadian side a little bit more than Haiti did, so it should be an interesting game. Here's Randy Hermes, first look at her. Plays for the Vancouver Breakers. Hermes just 22 years old. Making her 29th appearance for Canada. Third out throw in for Canada here. Well, yes, it is a little cool. You can tell by that picture. Temperature just a little bit above the freezing point. Throw in in Jamaica's own for Canada. Right in front of the net. A couple of opportunities there and unable to put that one away was Candace Chapman. And the keeper Nikeshi Thomas saving the day for Jamaica. Fouled on that play. Canadian player down and we'll have a look and the yellow card comes out right away to number seven, Alicia Wilson. It's Carmelina Moscato down on the pitch.
So the first yellow of this match already. Have a look here. And Carmelina just getting a little bit of a knock from behind. Didn't look too severe, but she's obviously in a lot of pain. Well, Evan Pellerud will be concerned. Obviously, Carmelina Moscato is in obvious pain down there on the pitch. This is scoring opportunity moments earlier. And wow, what a chance that was. And give credit to the keeper. She came out nicely and blocked that shot. Eighteen-year-old Carmelina Moscato of Penn State University. There's Christopher Bender, the Jamaican coach, looking on. And Moscato is not looking too comfortable there as she has taken off on the stretcher. Boy, oh boy, you expected Canada would win this game rather easily, and the last thing you want is to come out of a game like this with injured players. That yellow card to Wilson coming in the third minute of play here. Well, that's one thing when we talked to Andrea Neal in the last game, they wanted to maintain as few in injuries as possible. And the first few minutes to get in an injury, that's not a good sign for Canada. And they're taking her right for in for some medical treatment, obviously. So it, it appears as though Carmelina Moscato's evening may be over already. Happened to, to her in the under-19 tournament, you might recall. She was taken off and did not return to that game. Karina LeBlanc sends it downfield. Charmaine Hooper is up there. Three Jamaican defenders messing this up just a little bit. Canada is getting ready to make a substitution here now. That's Amy Walsh getting set to come in. Geneva Sinclair for Jamaica clears. Long ball downfield. Silvana Bertini racing back from her left flank position. And then Bertini sends it down. No score, early going, Canada, Jamaica. Broken up there by Latoya Linton. Not a lot of flow in this game just yet. Hooper drops it back for Bertini. Bertini's return ball ends up going right to the keeper, Thomas. This is Bertini with it. Carl Lang leaving it back for Christine Sinclair. And there's a save by the keeper, another a shot and another save. Frenzied action around the Jamaica goal, but the score holds. Here's a Jamaican player trying to get free into the box, and she gets a shot, but it's right at LeBlanc. She's number 10, I believe, Nicole Burwise. Well, what a great opportunity here for Sinclair. That is such a surprise that she didn't finish it, but another opportunity, and still, great Great job by the uh, Jamaican keeper there to block those shots. And Amy Walsh, you see her there, is now into this game replacing Carmelina Moscato. Ball knocked downfield by Brianna Boyd. Here's Hooper, Charmaine Hooper. And the flag is up. And I'm not sure about that call there. I don't know what, what's being called. Well, neither is Charmaine Hooper sure about it. Well, she gains possession of the ball here, holds off her player, but that's not a foul. That's shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder contact. Well, at any rate, call has been made. Jamaica sends the ball downfield. Jamaica so far showing a lot more than Haiti did in the early going. They hardly had a touch for the first 15 minutes or so. That's not the case here tonight. Jamaica playing with a lot of confidence, not afraid to take on these Canadian players. And, you know, Canada's got to be aware and got to play stronger this half, win all those balls in the air, win all the balls that knock down as well. Canada's throw in, quickly taken by Chapman. 
Lang can't do anything with that. Throw in from Chapman. There's a looping ball that's too high. Goal kick here for Nikeshi Thomas, who has really played brilliantly. Several tough stops to make already, and the 20-year-old has been up to the task. They didn't do very well on that play, however, and so Candace Chapman will put it back in. Actually, she's going to leave it this time for Brianna Boyd. That ball's meant for Chapman. Lang is down in the corner as well. Chapman fighting against Linton, literally. And Chapman given a lot of free reign to move forward, which is great. She's such a great offensive player, and she's so dangerous when she moves up with the ball. And obviously, Evan Pellard has given her that freedom to move up and take those balls on, take those crosses. Great player. 32-year-old Silvana Bertini, who made some great crosses against Haiti, steps forward to take this corner kick. Or pardon me. Free kick. That was not a great one, I don't think, but it's still available there. Not cleared out of danger yet. Here's Lang with a shot. Canada getting the opportunities, most recently right there from 16-year-old Carl Lang. Well, the more opportunities they keep miss missing, the more confidence that Jamaica's going to have, especially after making some great saves. The Jamaican keeper, they're going to they're gonna have a lot of confidence, and you're seeing this as the game goes on. They have confidence. Canada trying to go on the attack again, but that ball too far for Chapman. Linton with the throw in. Far side it goes. That's Randy Hermes clearing. Looking for Bertini. Can she get to that? Yes, she can. Two players in front. There's Bertini's cross. Hooper can't quite, well, she might have got a touch on it, and the keeper is there again, Thomas. So Charmaine Hooper coming close. Canadians with many opportunities here. Jamaica showing some fight, but it's all Canada here offensively. And what a beautiful ball in by Silvana Bertini. You know, I, talking with Evan, he wasn't sure how she would perform in that left flank position. And I think she's taken quite well to that, Jerry. She's dominated that left side and put some great crosses in. Well, he was forced to make a move there before the tournament began with the Injury to Isabel Morneau. She did not even get to start this tournament. She dislocated her shoulder in training a week before it began. And so Bertini has taken over that position and done a great job. Here's Lang in the corner. Sends it back, but it was nowhere near anybody. Nicole Burwise breaks it up. Burwise into the middle. Nice possession play here by Jamaica. Long ball, though, wasted there into the corner. Back is Brianna Boyd. Well, watching this game, Jerry, it's hard to believe that Jamaica and Haiti tied in preliminary rounds. Jamaica winning the first game in qualifying and then tying Haiti. Jamaica just looks to be a much, much stronger team. Chapman now. With the throw in, referee says back it up a little bit. So Lang will do it, or pardon me, Brianna Boyd will do it. Chapman lets that one go, then it bounces off her to Lang. Lang quickly in front, Hooper's there, can't quite get to it, it was broken up, but then it's given back to Hooper, flicks it into the middle for Sinclair, scores! Christine Sinclair!
And so Canada opens the scoring through Christine Sinclair in the 13th minute. And Charmaine a little surprised at the ball pop back into her feet and touches that ball nicely to Sinclair who sees the net, slots that one in to the left, right of the goalkeeper. Beautiful shot. And a lovely little touch from Hooper, wasn't it? Oh, beautiful. I, I think she was a little shocked that the ball was at her feet at that point, but does good to get her head up and see Sinclair running in. Christine Sinclair with five goals now leads the way in this tournament. You'll recall she scored 10 goals to lead the way in the under-19 World Championship. And she's got five here already in a little more than one full game play. I think that makes her total tally with the senior team 30 goals, Jerry. Pretty impressive. Yes, indeed. 30 goals in 36 appearances. That's nearly a goal a game pace. Corner kick to Kennedy here from the far side. And Thomas, the keeper, is there. She's fairly tall, perhaps the tallest player in the team, and she's also limping, as you can see. Jamaica now forward in numbers here. That ball looking for Diana Hugh. Didn't get to her. Then there's a ball that goes all the way to Karina LeBlanc, who's had a little more to do than Aaron McLeod did last, the other night, but not a whole lot. Canada in possession. Take a look at the all-time goal leaders for Canada. And the top three are active players. Boy, they've been piling it on in this tournament. And you just get, think of Sinclair in a couple more years. Carl Lang pulled down there, resulting in the free kick for Canada. This will be Silvana Bertini to take it. In there with pace. Somehow that snuck through everybody. A lot of players there available, but nobody able to get to it. And obviously Canada's practiced these free kicks and these corner kicks with Silvana Bertini because she places them so well and the players are in perfect position for them. Surprising that they didn't get on the end of that. That's something that you want to make sure you've got to finish those ones. Nikeshi Thomas, the keeper down. Evan Pelleru, happy to get that early lead, no doubt. But Thomas, she was limping there a moment ago and I think that's probably why she's down here now getting attention. Canada has played Jamaica in the past. Not a whole lot, but obviously not too much difficulty against this team. 9-0 and 3-0 in those two games. Number three is Brianna Boyd in the lineup for Canada today. Charmaine Hooper and now Thomas seems ready to go again. <laughs> Referee awarding this free kick to Jamaica. This is Burwise. Bothered by Timko. Forced into a hurried pass that didn't work. Now Hooper has it. Charmaine Hooper. Looking to find Carl Lang, just missed. Brittany Timko. Can't get away. This is Alicia James. A lot of play in the middle of the park here. Geneva Sinclair. Over to the far side. That's broken up. It will be Jamaica's ball here. Another look at that last play involving with Randy Hermes there, who commits the foul. Ball sent into the middle. Jamaica Hill still with an opportunity. And there's a cross in there, and that's just wide. Karina LeBlanc could not get to it, and it was just off the post. So an opportunity there for Jamaica through number eight, Diana Hugh, the 21 year old in Canada. Fortunate there, perhaps, to stay on top by a score of 1-0 after that. Another look. 
Well, and Evans got to be a little shaken up from that one. You don't want any of these teams coming too close. Canada should be dominating these games, not giving any chances. Jamaica must have watched the game against uh, Haiti. There's Caroline with a shot just over the bar. Looks like she just tried to flick that one over the keeper, and it nearly worked. And here's a good opportunity, Carl Lang. Not a bad strike. Tr should have tried to get over the ball a little bit more. Got a little bit bent back, and the ball went over the net, but not a bad effort. Candace Chapman retrieves this one. Canada with lots of players forward. Here's Hooper getting in behind. And finally, one of the defenders gets back to spoil that effort from Charmaine Hooper. Well, the biggest difference I'm, I'm seeing with Jamaica and, uh, and Haiti is Jamaica's actually marking these Canadian strikers. You know, Charmaine's got two players on her all the time, and against Haiti, she had nobody marking her. So they're doing a good job actually marking these Canadian strikers. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult to find those open spaces and those open players in this game. Canada with five shots on goal already against one for Jamaica. Well, don't know what that was all about. But anyway, Canada coming back here with Brianna Boyd. And there it is, deflecting and bouncing around. And it's 2-0 Canada. Well, you take them any way you can, I suppose. And a beautiful ball across here. And it looked like they were marking the first Canadian player, Charmaine, just sitting behind and gets that one just bouncing right over top of everybody else. Charmaine in behind, just touches that wide, beautifully struck. You know, I thought that was more scrambly than it was, but really that was a great move by Charmaine Hooper. <laughs> I think she was a little surprised that it reached her. Beautiful flick by Charmaine Hooper, her fourth goal of the tournament, and it's 2-0 Canada, that goal in the 20th minute. So while Jamaica is showing a little more fight than Haiti did, the bottom line is they're down by two goals already. And what a beautiful cross by Brianna Boyd. Charmaine Hooper just waiting behind. Gets on the end of that one nicely. Meanwhile, the stretcher is out for another injured player, this time from Jamaica. Another look. Didn't look to be too bad of a tackle. Brittany Timko. And so Timko getting the yellow card on that play. So one for each team right now. Timko might be the smallest player in the Canadian team, but she certainly is not shy. Very aggressive player. Bertini sends that ball forward. Broken up and back the other way is Burwise. Here's Alicia Wilson. There's Bertini back to break it up though. Sylvana Bertini coming back and helping out defensively when needed. And you know, Jerry, that, that flank position is such a tough, tough position because you have to cover that whole side of the field. I spoke with Sylvana about uh, her thoughts on playing that position, and uh, she definitely didn't look forward to all the running, but she's doing a great job out there. Well, you're running up and down all night, that's for sure, as we get ready for Randy Hermes and the throw in here. Hooper back into the middle. There's Bertini trying to square to get a shot. Couldn't quite do it. It's still available, and then finally cleared out of the box. Canadian players back, though, to recover quickly. Here's Charolta Nonan. All the way down into the corner, that's over everybody. Jerry, it's amazing to see how many Canadian players are in the attack. They push up so well. There was about four or five Canadian players in that box wanting to, to get a hold of that ball. That's good for Canada, but Jamaica's matching them defensively. They're all pulling back when Canada starts to attack. Free kick from Thomas. Goal kick rather from Thomas, and that's an offside flag there.
Another look at the offside. Definitely offside on that one. Canada two, Jamaica nil. This is Geneva Sinclair. Headed back by her namesake, Christine Sinclair. Bertini. Long ball and Candace Chapman was racing into the middle to try to get to that one, couldn't quite do it. There's Timko into the middle of it to Lang. Lang down the right side. Her ball is deflected. Boyd sends it in. Carl Lang couldn't control it. The call goes Jamaica's way. And I would think that ball was out before Carl Lang even touched it, which I think I heard Evan Peller would actually give it a little scream there because he couldn't believe the ball was going Jamaica's way. Well, the assistant referee was right there at any rate, so that's the call. Burwise clears. All the way down where Karina LeBlanc is way out to corral it. Bit of a dangerous ball there for Sherolta Nonan. 25 minutes gone. First half, still 2 nothing. That was definitely a close pass. I'm not sure if that's the play that Evan would have preferred. Ball deflected off a Canadian player. Evan Pellerud talking earlier today about the great performance by Brittany Timko as you look at Christopher Bender. Jamaica putting it back in play. Just 17, but reads the game so well. Sinclair can't get to that one. You know, I'd have to agree, Jerry. She's one of those players that you really don't notice on the field, but does everything really, really well. Rarely loses possession. Here's Bertini. One on one with Hishamer Falconer just knocked out of play, but Brittany Timko at 17 years of age for the Burnaby Panthers was just great against Haiti. And he says that she does read the game just about better than anybody on the pitch. And at that age, that certainly bodes well for the future. And you have to say she played amazing at the Under-19 World Cup as well. Nonan's ball downfield. Too far for Bertini. Jamaica's ball. Victory for Canada. Souls up a spot in the semifinals. Winners of the semifinals obviously play in the championship match. The two losers of the semifinals play in the consolation final. And the winner of that game still has an opportunity to qualify for next summer's World Cup in a playoff against the yet to be named Asian team. Yes, sir. Nolan sends it forward. Canada's ball here, says referee Alpazar. Bender, like the Haitian coach before him, wishing it was a little bit warmer. What an adjustment for these teams to make. Well, just like Canadian teams sometimes wish it was a little cooler when they have to go to the Caribbean <laughs> and Central America to play in the oppressive heat at high noon in July. Here's Nonan's free kick. Knocked on over the end line. Well, Jamaica, a much more organized team than Haiti, and uh, it's obviously proving to work well for them. Canada not as dominant in this first half so far. And the game does not have a lot of pace to it either. Very slow moving game. Jamaica trying to move forward, but again, a ball that's too far for everybody. Back to the keeper, LeBlanc, who misfires on that one. Maria LeBlanc starting in place of Aaron McLeod. Pellerud says he's got two keepers that he can choose from. Here's the throw in from Linton. Choose from with full confidence, that is. And that attack fizzles by Jamaica. It's Canada's ball. Brianna 
Now Boyd knocked forward. Caroline can't escape. However, Canada will get the throw in. Well, they are marking Caroline pretty tightly, and uh, they're matching her pace by pace as well. Chapman's throw in too far for Lang. And Lang commits the foul on Felicia Lewis. Felicia Lewis, number three for Jamaica, is just 16 years old. As I said, they have several teenagers on this team. They have only one player over 30, and she's not starting. So this entire roster is full of players in their teens and 20s. Starting 11. Brianna Boyd's throw in. There's Lang. Clearing wildly is Alicia James. And look at how many Jamaican players were around Carl Lang on that play. They've got three defensive players there. Canadian team, as I said, very young. The average age just 22. The oldest player, of course, is Charmaine Hooper, and the youngest used to be 15. She's now 16, of course, Carl Lang. But Jamaica's a young team, and so is Canada. Hard to believe that Carl Lang is playing with the senior team, and this is not her first go with the senior team. This is her 11th appearance, six goals. There's a cross in front too far. A little surprising that they would change up those corner kicks considering how dangerous they've been with uh, Silvana Bertini. And a word on Carmelina Moscato is a right knee sprain. She will be evaluated. So she's done for this evening, obviously, having been substituted for. Let's hope it's not serious. She will not be going to the hospital, so I guess it's not too serious. Timko and Nonin breaking up that play, but the ball goes for Jamaica. Well, we have seen Timko all over the field this half, and that's one thing that Evan Pellerud told us to take notice of, and we've noticed a lot of, is she's everywhere. She's all over the park. Amy Walsh can't clear the first time. Second time it was cleared by Hermes. There's Timko sending it forward. Too far for Sinclair. Geneva Sinclair leaves it for the keeper, Thomas. Oh, and there's a through ball played into the middle. And her shot is no good. Wow. That's Nicole Burwise, the oldest player in the starting roster here at 28 years old. Just missing there. And wow, that player, great opportunity to put them up. One more goal, but uh, one goal, I should say. But uh, wow, that was too close. Opportunity for Jamaica to get on the board. Doesn't happen. Timko sends it into the middle. Headed on from Hooper. Oh, that nearly connected with Candace Chapman. Meanwhile, that's Brittany Timko way up into the corner fighting for that ball, and it's flag down though. This is James. On the run is Linton, but she can't handle that one. Boyd. And that play doesn't work either. There's Wilson into the middle. Ball played back for Burwise. Didn't happen, but again, Jamaica coming forward, showing signs of life here from time to time. It's knocked down field. Hooper tried to get it on to Lang. Recovered by Sinclair. 33 minutes have elapsed here. Still 2-0 Canada. On goals by Christine Sinclair and Charmaine Hooper. And Jamaica finding themselves in open positions with no Canadian players marking them. 
Well, we were talking last night, or the other night rather, against Haiti, how difficult it might be sometimes to lose your focus and lose the game plan when the goals just keep coming like that. And you tend to get greedy and want to just keep piling it on. Well, you have to retain your focus, especially defensively. And that's always a danger. And even in the attacking third, Jamaica winning a lot of those balls. They're getting in front of the Canadian strikers. Walsh forward too far for Bertini, just barely. And that might have been good because Hooper and Lang were both up there. Canada will wrap up the round robin portion of this tournament on Sunday afternoon against Costa Rica. Cara Lang, you know, she's starting to get a little bit more experience, and when she does, she'll start to know when she should, on that play, she turned with the ball and followed it out, but there wasn't a lot of space. Better option would have been for her to actually control it and take a look. That'll come with experience. She's only 16 years old. Canada getting their wires crossed a little bit there. Nonan sends it down. Hooper bumping there with Michelle to pass. Here's Timko stepping forward. Seems to read those plays beautifully. Tried to get it to Hooper. Timko still going. Eventually, eventually she stopped. Back comes Linton for Jamaica. Couple of players up here, but they bump into each other. That's Wilson and Burwise. Wilson, I think, is still down. Bertini back for Canada. That is a wayward ball. And on that, Jerry, look at the space between the defenders, the Canadian defenders and the Canadian strikers, and how many players are there supporting them. They're way too spread out. There's not enough players up front and not enough players supporting them. Christine Sinclair scored the first goal of this game. Charmaine Hooper followed up. It's 2-0 Canada. The game with not exactly a dynamite pace to it, however. Cleared by Geneva Sinclair, but not very well. There's Sinclair with the ball forward. Lang with a strike right at goal, saved by Thomas. Timko, heading it forward for Hooper. Hooper one-on-one -on -one with DePass. DePass comes out on top. Headed back in by Timko. Hooper then sends it on. Sinclair is there. Sinclair's cross, and Thomas off her line. Well, Tom is playing with a lot of confidence in this game so far. She's coming out strong, making decisions, sticking with them. And it's paid off, holding the score at 2-0. Here's Sherolta Nonan. And you can hear her actually complain about her own ball there as it went into touch. Jamaica from Falconer with the throw on, throw in. Into the middle, Timko trying to break it up. Linton has it for Jamaica. Stopped by Candace Chapman who quickly goes the other way. Chapman with a run going here. Linton chasing her, Chapman still with it in deep now. Chapman's cross. It's behind everybody. Oh, and I think Amy Walsh there committing the foul, knocking down Diana Hugh. And a beautiful run by Candace Chapman and Amy Walsh trying to get on the end of that just pushes her opponent out of the way. Great run by Candace Chapman in that case. Candace Chapman of University of Notre Dame, 19 years old. Canada now with a break. Here's Hooper with a shot over the net. Canada with opportunities. Charmaine Hooper with that one. 
Oh, and Canada, Canada, great opportunity here. Hooper, probably surprised that she didn't get that one on net, and I'm sure she wishes she had that one back. Canada now with six shots here in the first half on target. Jamaica with just the one. Charmaine Hooper, lots of time to take a look. Should have gone far post in the corner. Just gets underneath that ball and puts it over top. Hooper has one already. She had three against Haiti. Four goals in the tournament, 53 for Canada now. Free kick here. Hooper's up there, doesn't get to her. Bertini is chasing Wilson. Cleared by Felicia Lewis. This is Wilson. Wilson. Nice recovery there, and Nonan finishes it off. Good work by Randy Hermes. Hooper now. Timko. Boyd. Walsh to the far side to Bertini. Walsh forward, but that ball a little bit aimless. One of the dangers with some of these weaker teams is that you tend to think ahead, and we asked Evan Pellerud about that very subject before today's game. Yes, it is hard, because everyone is talking to us, and the players are talking themselves about the semifinals coming up next week and uh, this is something we have to be very conscious about to take every game as it is and try to beat the, the next uh, the next team uh, it's challenging for sure one slip off in this one. it is a challenge not to think about what's coming up you only want to think one game at a time and right now the task at hand is to beat Jamaica here's Bertini this looks good for Canada if Bertini can get it in front. And I think so far in this game, Canada probably a little surprised at the strength of Jamaica and the confidence of Jamaica. Another look at that last play. And Bertini just tries to get around the uh, opposing Jamaican defense there, but just pushes a little too far and results in a goal kick. Canada with more than 50% of the ball possession in this first half. And 100% of the goals, two of them. Sinclair to Walsh. To Hooper, back to Walsh, nicely done. Here's Amy Walsh picking the corner and scoring! Amy Walsh has scored to make it 3-0 Canada. And Amy Wall should be happy with herself here. A beautiful one-two play. She passes that ball off to Charmaine, looks for the rebound pass, and just slots it into that far corner. Beautiful little play here. She sees the opening behind the defenders. Defenders getting caught watching the ball, and she just slots that. Beautiful, beautiful finish. 42nd minute, Amy Walsh has given Canada a 3-0 lead. So but that was a great ball by Hooper because she had to reach back for that one and still flicked it on. And a great, great ball by Charmaine Hooper and a beautiful run by Amy Walsh. One thing you're going to see is this Jamaican defense get caught watching the ball. And it's runs like that that will ca catch them off guard. Lang on the far side fighting for it, losing out. Here's Nonan. Looking for Hooper, I suppose, too far all the way to the keeper, Thomas. Hooper not too happy with that. She was pointing down to the ground to her feet, looking at Nona. and Nona put that in the air. It's not the best place to play a long ball in the air because you're already in the 18-yard box, and the chances of the keeper winning that are very high. Here's another look at that. 
Yeah, Hooper had to definitely try to get that one off, but Amy Walsh very composed on this finish. Hooper having to reach back and still successful in getting that ball onto Walsh. Great play by Hooper showing her skill. Yellow card handed out here by the referee, the third of the evening. It looked like uh, Candace Chapman just getting stepped on there. And the yellow card goes to Michelle DePass. So that's two yellows for Jamaica and one to Canada. That was Brittany Timko earlier. So Michelle DePass, she's just 17 years old. She's booked and things getting a little rugged down there. Well, we said this Jamaican team was going to be a little bit more physical, and they sure are. There's the free kick. Off the bar and in! What a strike by Carl Lang! Unbelievable strike by Carl Lang. Evan Pellerud has talked about this, hasn't he, Helen? Well, he talked about putting her up there to take one of these free kicks to scare the opposition, but I don't know if you can scare an opposition more than that, Jerry. That's probably one of the most beautiful goals I've ever seen. Oh. What a well-taken shot. She's Look. 16 years old, folks, and she has just made it 4 nothing, Canada. Wow. That's what you call a bullet of a shot. We are now into time added on here in the first half. What a cracker of a shot that was, stunning everybody here at Centennial Stadium in Victoria. 4 nothing, Canada. Wow. I don't think free kicks get much better than that. Three minutes of time to be added on here at the end of the first half. Here's Bertini. Looking for Hooper, she gives up on that one, not wasting the energy, Thomas has it. Canada establishing themselves here on goals by Sinclair, Hooper, Walsh who had come on for Carmelina Moscato, who was injured in the early going with a knee strain. And then Carl Lang there with that bullet off the bar and in. Wow, this Jamaican team not afraid to go in hard. Well, they may go in harder now, down by four. That was Diana Hugh. Nonan going over the top a little bit there on Alicia Wilson. Hooper leaving it for Bertini. Didn't connect. Back is Randy Hermas. This is Hermas. Another look at that last ball. Simply going over the line. Push from behind, but at the same time, you can't really stop as a player. Hermas shouldn't have stopped. She should have followed the ball out. She wouldn't have been hit as hard. Lang coming back to help out defensively. That's Boyd breaking it up. Then Nonan. Timko with the header. Here's Chapman. Sinclair is up. Hooper is up. Oh, and Chapman misfires there. Chapman had Carl Lang on her right-hand side making a beautiful run down that right flank, but just let the ball get too far ahead of her. Alicia Wilson was booked earlier. Here's Karina LeBlanc. Timko into the box, still there. Time winding down here in the first half. Canada four, Jamaica nothing. A win for Canada puts them in the semifinals. They'll round out the preliminary portion of the tournament on Sunday against Costa Rica. Here's Thomas. Knocked back by Chapman. Final minute of injury time here. Cleared down by Falconer. That ball for Hooper. 
Here's Hooper with two defenders on her. Randy Hermes moves up. Flicked on and the keeper is there just ahead of the on-rushing Canadian forward Carl Lang. I think we're seeing a little bit more strength defensively by this Jamaican side in this half. Well, it started rather slowly. Jamaica putting up more of a fight than Haiti did in the game the other night when Canada won easily 11 to 1. But in this case, it's goals by Sinclair, Hooper, Walsh, and Lang to give Canada a 4 0 lead. Back defensively and actually marking Charmaine Hooper and Cara Lang quite well. With Charmaine, they've got two men on her. Cara Lang's marked, and a player, the player that's marking her is quite, quite fast, marking her very well. I'd like to see the Canadian strikers try to get a little bit in front of their de defenders because what's happening is defenders winning the ball sometimes. They get in front of them, win possession of the ball, or beat them on the run, make those nice runs into the corners or into the middle, and it'll be a, maybe a higher scoring game so far in this half. Well, we shall see. In the earlier game, all the scoring came in the second half. It was nil-nil at the break, and then Costa Rica came up with five goals in the second half to win against Haiti going away. Canada with four in the first half here. Sinclair, Hooper, Walsh, and Lang. And to recap, in case you missed it, Carmelina Moscato went off with a knee injury in the early going. She was replaced by Amy Walsh. The news on Moscato was a knee strain. She will be reevaluated after the game. She did not go to hospital, so that's the good news. So Canada 45 minutes away, a little less than that now, from qualifying for the semifinals. If this tournament goes according to form, Canada would likely play Mexico in the semifinal on Wednesday in Seattle. And the United States would probably play, well, I'm guessing Costa Rica, who might finish second in this group here, or probably will finish second. And then the two winners of the semifinals will meet in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. And we're all expecting that to be Canada, the United States. And there's a shot right there. And again, Thomas, the keeper, had to be sharp. So while it's 4 nothing, it could very easily be 6 or 7 nothing. And a nice ball across. Charmaine Hooper gets that ball, turns, fires it off. And Thomas does a really good job of holding on to that ball. Shot from such close range. Canada coming close here in the early moments of the second half. That ball headed backwards, I think, inadvertently by the Jamaican defender. Charmaine Hooper looking for more. And Charmaine Hooper has the distinction, it's been announced today as Bertini throws it into her, of being the first female player ever inducted into the USL Hall of Fame. That's the United Soccer Leagues of America Hall of Fame. Charmaine Hooper, the first female inducted. Congratulations to her. Here's Randy Hermes with the throw in. Into the box, here's Bertini. Can't get a shot, lays it back, Sinclair. And that's offside. And see how many Jamaican players were crowding the middle, middle of the area there. Just crowding it, not allowing the Canadian players to have any time in the ball. And there's the offside there. Ooh, close when the ball was kicked. Very close. Ruled offside. Throw in here for Jamaica. See if they have something to offer here in this half. Throw in from Falconer. Here's Falconer again, sending it forward for Burwise. Nicole Burwise. Back for Wilson. Jamaica with a little possession here. Burwise trying to flick it over top of Hermes. And back to help out at the last minute was Sherolta Nonan. And Burwise showing a little bit of skill here. Nicely done. Pops this one over and just gets hit there. Sherolta Nonan obviously gets a call for her. Boyd sends it downfield. Hooper can't get to it. It's cleared by Felicia Lewis. Look again at Sherolta Nonan from the Atlanta Beat. 25 years old, 33rd international for Canada. Knocked back in. Here's the free kick from Thomas, who's been very busy. 
and has acquitted herself very admirably here. Here's Boyd. Boyd with lots of time. Tried to find the streaking Carl Lang was unable to do so. Throw in for Jamaica. And really again, got to give Jamaica credit. They're marking those spaces quite well, not allowing the Canadian players to penetrate those spaces. In the fifth minute here of the second half. Here's Boyd. Canada unable to do much here. Neither is Jamaica. Lang committing the foul. Jamaican player still down. And there's a look at the Carl Lang hit there. Stepping in a little bit against Geneva Sinclair. Well, actually down is Alicia James. Alicia James, the captain of this team. She's just 20. Brittany Timko there is just 17. Hard to believe. So young and so talented. Both of these players. Carl what, Lang as well. What a strike that was from Carl Lang at the end of the first half. And what a year for her. Coming from an under-19 World Cup and now to a CONCACAF qualifying for the World Cup next year. Busy year for that girl. For all these girls, I guess. James getting some medical attention on the pitch. A bit of a break in the action, and she is taken off on the stretcher here. So, Alicia James, she's the captain, 20 years old. Canada trying to break quickly with Hooper, who gets a lucky bounce, and here's another close opportunity for Canada as Hooper laid it off to Sinclair, and the keeper couldn't field that one cleanly. Canada nearly going up by five. And Sinclair made a nice run from behind there. Touches that one. Thomas does a good job of just touching that one out for a corner kick. So Canada on the attack here. Silvana Bertini with the corner. Sinclair in front. And that one's headed just wide. Well, Bertini's done a really nice job with those corner kicks. Hits that near post, Sinclair on that near post with her height, her strength in the air. She hits, almost wins every single ball that comes across to her. Another look at that play. Corner kick in. Hermes went up for that one as well. Except. Sinclair headed that one on, but it went right to a Jamaican defender, and Jamaica with possession now. Hermes lets it go. Randy Hermes in the lineup because in the words of Evan Pellerud, she had the best practice yesterday. Lang back heeled that to herself. Too far for Hooper, but there's Brittany Timko, and she can't get a clean shot. Chapman races after it to keep it in play. Back for Lang. Carl Lang flicks it on for Chapman. Cross. Thomas missed it. Here's Sinclair shooting and missing. Wow. A couple of opportunities there for Canada, but the score remains four. And a couple great plays by Carl Lang. Lays that one all across the field. Sinclair. Oh, unbelievable. Great, great stuff by Carl Lang. Pressure is still on. The moment is not done yet. Here's Bertini. Into the middle, flicked by Sinclair. Lang with a flick on it too, with a head on it, and it's still 4-0. Well, I said earlier that uh, Bertini puts those corner kicks in so nicely. Sinclair on that near post, so dominant in the air, and here we see her again winning that ball. And oh, Carl Lang had a little bit more time than she thought. Unfortunately, gets underneath the ball and pops it over the net. So headers from Sinclair and Lang there. Canada very impressive here. They were impressive against Haiti, but 
I think they're just showing even more skill here. Even though the score is a little lower, they're making some fine plays. Walsh for Lang. That one's interrupted. Hermes. She loses that battle. But Canada will win the ball back. Randy Hermes has scored once in her career for Canada. This is her 29th international. Nonan to the far side to Boyd. Brianna Boyd with lots of room down that right side. Nobody challenging her. Forward for Hooper. Timko then sends it forward. Here's Charmaine Hooper now. She's fouled. I think they're leaving a lot of space for those defenders to move forward. A lot of Jamaican players moving back, defending. They've got about five players as a defensive wall. And it's James that's down again. Can't tell exactly how she hurt herself there. It must be the same injury that's bothering her. Alicia James, the captain. Her back, obviously. So we continue on here, 4-0 Canada, and Canada with all the opportunities here in the first few minutes of the second half. Nothing doing for Jamaica at all here right now. Jamaica playing a very defensive game, and I guess they have to, Jerry. 10 minutes into the second half. There's the header, flicked in, and a goal for Canada! Randy Hermes moving up from her defensive position. And what a beautiful ball in. Obviously, this has been practiced a few times because Hermes makes a nice run in. Just touches that over the keeper. 56th minute of play. It's Randy Hermes on this play here, her second goal for her country. And this definitely looks like it's been practiced a few times because that was so... Perfectly, perfectly done. Canada showing great technical skill here against, well, we'd have to agree, an inferior opponent here tonight in Victoria. The games will get more difficult as the tournament goes on, but right now, Canada having it their own way in group number two. Throw in now for Canada. Big battle down there in the corner with Charmaine Hooper not giving an inch against Latoya Linton. And what a battle that is. Both of them battling hard. Maybe a little frustration on the Jamaican side, but marking Charmaine Hooper very tightly. So this is not a corner kick, but it's the next best thing. Here's Bertini. A lazy one into the middle. And Thomas is there to grab that. Well, the one thing that Evan Peller had said he was very happy with was Bertini's crosses. And there's another instance of a great cross, a beautiful cross into the box. And she's been doing that the whole game. Hooper almost breaking free there as Jamaica starting to look rather exposed at the back here. Hooper, Sinclair, and Lang up front. A very formidable trio. And there's a look at another battle with Charmaine Hooper. She's getting banged around a little bit. Here's Timko. Long ball down. Things are getting tough down here, aren't they? And you wonder, Jamaica-Costa Rica game got very physical on the latter stages. This time it's Felicia Lewis involved with Christine Sinclair. And there was some nasty stuff going on in the second half of that game. Well, it's interesting, the more this game goes on, the more a little physical it gets, and I think it's going to happen the rest of this game because you just see it going on all over the place with different players. It was a handball, I believe, by Carl Lang. Yep, no doubt about that. Carl Lang usually in the middle of things. Hooper doesn't get to the end of that one. Throw in for Jamaica. Quickly taken. 
Hermes moves up. Bertini is in there. Can't win the ball, cleared by Falconer. Here's Hermes. Bertini in the corner. Gets the cross in front, easily handled by Thomas. Not a bad cross by Bertini, but nobody at that near post to knock that one in. Marina LeBlanc at the other end has had absolutely nothing to do. Boyd had stepped up to head that one forward. Decision reversed. Timko quickly gets it downfield. There's Hooper. Charmaine Hooper has it, takes a look. Left foot in front over Carl Lang and Sinclair. Carl Lang should have held off that run a little bit more. Could have got on the end of that, just pushed into a run a little too much, moved into the center, should have held it off, and uh, she could have had a better chance at scoring on that one. We're into the 60th minute now in the second half. Corner kick to Canada. Bertini to take it. Their fifth corner of this match. Sinclair on the post. That ball just sitting there bouncing around and Thomas coming out to grab it eventually. Not sure how Thomas got her hands on the end of that, but good job on her part. A nice corner, knocks around a little bit and Thomas just gets the end of that one. So Jamaica unable to get anything going at all here. Canada just simply giving them no chance to get out of their own zone. Here's Timko intercepting that ball, sending it right back. One thing Evan Pellard might be a little nervous of is uh, Timko. She's already got one yellow card. Canada making a substitution here. As coming out of this game is Silvana Bertini, and going in is Melanie Booth. Melanie Booth for Silvana Bertini. Meanwhile, Jamaica. This is Latoya Linton coming off. And in her place is Suzette Murray, the veteran at age 29. So substitutions for both sides here. Bertini with a well-deserved rest for Canada, that's for sure. She has really done a great job filling in in a position with which she is not familiar. She's done a great job filling in on that left side. And here's a look at that foul committed by Cara Lang, just pushing off on the back there. Jamaica with a free kick in the offensive side of the line for a change. And it goes easily to Karina LeBlanc. And she quickly tries to catch the Jamaican defense off guard and nearly does. Here's Lang. Struggled to bring that ball down, but doesn't give up and wins it back. Here's Lang now. Takes a shot from well out. It scores! Wow! You know, sometimes you wonder why she takes strikes from out here, and this is exactly why. Look at that strike. Absolutely beautiful. Connects so well with the ball. Incredible strike. 16 years old. Are you stumped a little bit for words here? <laughs> this, those two goals by Carl Lang, the one at the end of the first half and this one here, are simply sensational. Carl Lang. How do you stop something like that, Jerry? <laughs> well, you don't. <laughs> that goal in the 63rd minute. And it's 6 nothing Canada. Lang has two this evening. And you have to give Carl Lang credit because prior to that shot, she actually lost possession, ran back, regained possession, 
and fired off that shot. She's got so much fight in her. She never gives up. Well, that's, that is the amazing part about it, isn't it? Because she did lose possession of the ball, but did not give up, even though the play had gone the other way. Came back, got it, fired it in the net. End of story. It's hard, it's hard to find that in a player, but boy, does she ever have that. So much fire in her. Jamaica coming back. This is Burwise. And there's LeBlanc easily. There's Lang again. Hooper for Lang. She's going to do it again. <laughs> Not successful this time. She took a look. She was ready to fire it off. Jamaica just knocking balls now whenever they get possession, and most of the time it's Canadians at the other end of it. That one call goes in their favor. Melanie Booth in the middle there along with Burwise. Will be Jamaica's ball again. Randy Hermes challenging there, but losing out. Ball thrown into the box. Cleared. Knocked back in by Falconer. And harmlessly away. And here's Evan Pellerud before the game talking about his players getting greedy. Well, first of all, I think that the striker is greedy to score goals is a good thing. And I, and I encourage them to be greedy, but not, not the selfish. Um, we have good goal scorers. We have a lot of goal, natural goal scorers in the team, which is a good thing. Uh, my approach to them before every game is to take pressure from themselves as well, is stick to your task, do your job. Uh, if you play USA or Haiti, doesn't uh, matter do your part of the job, which is very lined up. They know what that is, and that will keep the focus on the game, where the result is 2-1 or 11-1. Well, it's not 2-1 and it's not 11-1, but it might get to that point, that's for sure. Evan Pellerud's approach, another look at that last infraction there. How happy he must be to have such strong strikers, players that can score goals. You got Lang, Sinclair, Bertini, Hooper, all strong goal scorers, natural goal scorers. You know, it's hard enough to find one natural goal scorer, and he's got at least four on the team. And he doesn't mind them being greedy either. Well, can you read that play? Neither can I. Handball, perhaps. Handball, and so Canada with the free kick here. Far post, and unsuccessfully headed that time by Cara Lang. She shouldn't be too disappointed <laughs> after the performance that she's put on here. A couple of sizzlers, one at either end. Sixty-eighth minute of play here. A little over 20 to go. Canada in control. That looked like a handball. A little bit of a delayed call on that one. Charlton Nonan. Long, lazy one downfield. Headed out of the box. Walsh moves up. Can't get to it. Timko moves up as well. And a down again goes Alicia James, thanks to Brittany Timko, who's half her size. That's, to me, that's not a foul. They're both going up for the ball. It looked equally 50-50, didn't it? And the one thing that Evan's got to be worried about is Timko does have a yellow card. He wants to keep her in the next game. She gets one more yellow card. She's out of this game and out of the next game. She does not give an inch, does Brittany Timko. 
And they seem to go up equally for that ball. I'm not sure why the call and even stranger still that James is James is the one to get hurt. Although she's been obviously bothered by her back this entire game. And if you look at the size of Timko, hard to believe she could really hurt anyone too severely. She's not one of the biggest players, but definitely one of the strongest players. 19 fouls for Canada, 12 to Jamaica in this game. And I think this is the second, perhaps third time that James has been taken off on the stretcher. At least twice. Christopher Bender might be running out of ideas here, trailing by this large margin. Good round run from Chapman, and she, did she step over on her ankle? She doesn't appear to be hurt, but I don't know if she went down on her own or if she was clipped from behind. Well, she's definitely looking at the ref for a call there, she so clipped. she must have been clipped a little bit. Can't really tell from that angle. Very unusual. But boy, did we see her speed on that run. She has great speed down that right side. There's no doubt about that. Offside is the call there, Brianna Boyd. Have a look again. Yeah, not by much, but that's offside. LeBlanc comes way off her line, way out to take this one. LeBlanc likes to play off of her line. Very comfortable with that. Very comfortable with her feet as well. Headed away, stepping up again is Amy Walsh that time. Sinclair in there. Cleared by Jamaica. Canada closing in on a berth in the semifinals of the Gold Cup. Headed down by Hermes and offside is the call. Lang in the offside position. Well, I saw Lang looking around, trying to hold her run off. Oh, I and think she really, might have. She did. She was in good position. That was a fair ball. There was nothing wrong with that at all. Alicia Wilson unable to get anywhere. Timko stepping up again to break that one up. Here's the throw in from Falconer. Melanie Booth and then Timko. Too far for Hooper. Goes all the way to Thomas. Those balls that go long into the middle are really hard because the keeper has a better opportunity of winning possession than your striker. Attendance on another cold evening in Victoria, just over 1,800. That's Nicole Burwise down. She appears to be in a great deal of difficulty. Canada, as you can see, getting ready to make a substitution as we look at this play again. And here's the foul, or the instance of her injuring herself. Didn't really look like much. Maybe landed on her foot and twisted. So Charmaine Hooper is coming out of this game. We're in the 73rd minute, and that's Christina Kiss coming on. So Christina Kiss getting her first taste of action in the Gold Cup as they still are working on the Jamaican player down. And it looks like Sherolta Nonan gets the captain's band. Sherolta Nonan replacing Hooper as captain and Kiss replacing her on the field. This is the 30th international for Christina Kiss at 21 years old. She has five goals for Canada. Throw in for Jamaica here. Christina Kiss taking over that role that Christine Sinclair had right behind the strikers. Sinclair moving up into the forward position. Great thing about these sorts of games is that it affords Evan Pellerud the opportunity to get everybody in there and have a look. That's exactly what he's doing here this evening with Christina Kiss getting in there. Melanie Booth is in there. 
Jamaica now making a substitution. Nicole Burwise will be coming out. And Jody Ann McGregor will be going in. And McGregor is just 17 years old. She's the youngest player, pardon me, the second youngest player in the team. The youngest is Felicia Lewis, the number three defender. So Jody Ann McGregor is in. And Nicole Burwise is out. Cross, too far. And that's Candace Chapman again with a nice little move. So quick, so much speed. When she, when she uses her speed, she gets by any player. It's amazing to see. The injured Jamaican player still on the pitch. She's not been taken inside. There's Lang having to turn the other way to get to that one. Booth moves up. And there's Thomas. Canada with 11 goals against Haiti, six here, 17 in under two full games in this tournament. I don't think goal differential will ever be a problem. They've allowed just the one, that one to Haiti. Jamaica recovering here, giving chase Christine Sinclair. Sinclair wins that ball. That should have been cleared easily by Jamaica, but it wasn't. Chapman back to Sinclair. There's her cross. The header by Lang. Now Jamaica should have cleared that easily and were unable to do so. Lang getting the opportunity. Don't forget, CHL on Sportsnet this Sunday across the network. It's Oshawa and Brampton. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Pacific time on Rogers Sportsnet. Goal kick for Thomas. Headed back the other way. Sinclair, Chapman, Canada winning all of these balls. Well, one player we haven't heard too much of in this game is Christine Sinclair. She's been a little quiet out there. She, can, she can save herself. Yeah. Chapman's cross deflected. Amy Walsh is moving up with an opportunity. Amy Walsh right in close, can't put it behind the keeper, Thomas. And Amy Walsh reading that play really well. She knows when to move forward and at the right time. And she does a good job here moving forward, getting into position. Working on Geneva Sinclair in that case. And here's the corner kick coming up for Melanie Booth. Headed down by Walsh, just wide. That'll be the end of that offensive thrust for Canada. Look at that stat. Wow. We thought Aaron McLeod didn't have much to do the other night. I think Karina LeBlanc has had even less to do. Jamaica just can't get anything going. It's all on the left side of your screen. Well, especially this second half, Jerry. And there's Sinclair. What was that about her not doing anything? <laughs> well, after I said that, I was going to say, when she does, she's going to score a goal. <laughs> She opened the scoring for Canada, and an easy tap in there for Christine Sinclair, her second of the tournament. This one in the 78th minute, it's now 7-0 Canada. Well, one thing about Sinclair is she can be silent through a game, but when she gets an opportunity to score a goal, she'll definitely do that. And what a beautiful finish here. Touches that nicely off the bounce. And Christina Kiss involved in this play by heading it on. Beautifully done. Canada showing great finish around goal here. Sinclair, Lang. Sinclair now has a tournament leading six goals. Here they go looking for more. That's Lang down there. Winning another tough battle for the ball. The cross in front. Sloppily handled but ends up in the arms of the keeper Thomas. You know Carl Lang's one of those players you love to have on your team, but hate to play against. Those are the best kind. <laughs> yeah. Jamaica's ball here, says referee Ave Maria Alpazar. And here's that battle. I guess Hermes was over the top a little bit there. 
Sinclair is bumped but wins the ball to Kiss. Sending it forward and there's Lang. Lang can't handle the ball. It's cleared by Lewis. Boyd forward. Chapman. Chapman's cross ends up with Amy Walsh. Here's Chapman moving in. Canada having their way completely here. Headed by Sinclair. And it's a corner kick. Amy Walsh probably should have taken a strike on that one. Should have been a little bit more selfish and just gone for goal. She had a great opportunity. Had a little bit of time on her to take a strike, but passed that off. But hey, they got a corner kick. Seven corners for Canada now. This one taken by Melanie Booth. In front, Walsh with the first header. An impressive performance here once again for Canada. Albeit the opposition is not up to standard. 11-1 against Haiti. Now 7-0 against Jamaica. Costa Rica still to come Sunday afternoon. And then it's on to the semifinals in Seattle. That was Denise Duncan. Ball sent in behind everybody right to the keeper, LeBlanc. You know, one great thing about this team is they have so much depth, Jerry. They've got Walsh that came in that first half, has done a great job. Claire Russ had Christina Kiss coming in and really doing such a good job. Hellerud must be so happy. He can count on any one of these players to play on this field at any time. Here's LeBlanc, who's sort of roving around back there as an extra defender right now. I guess she's just anxious to get involved any way <laughs> she can, help keep warm. Another Jamaican down, and the, you might hear the groan from the crowd on that one. Let's have a look here. I really don't know what that call was for, Jerry. Yeah, she clipped her in the shin, but then she didn't go down until she took a look back at the referee. That's part of the game. When you go in for tackles, you're going to end up clipping someone. It's just part of the game. You can't get called every time something like that happens. Sinclair to Booth. Booth in the corner, bringing it out a little bit. In front, cleared away. Walsh sends it back in. And unable to get to it is Lang. Lang trying to get that one one time. Probably should have controlled it and then taken a shot, but didn't realize she had as much time as she did. Well, by virtue of Canada scoring, what is it, 11, 7, 18 goals, you can see why they're leading the way in the goal scoring department with one player from Panama in there. That team is in the other group, but Sinclair with six now. Hooper, four. Bertini and Lang each have a couple. That shot just off the post. Thomas letting it go. Less than 10 minutes to go. We're in the 82nd minute here. Carl Lang has had a marvelous game here with two tremendous strikes for goals. Splitting her time between school and soccer right now. Does she even go to school anymore no, with the she, amount of soccer she's playing? Don't say that. <laughs> she's only 16. Yeah. She's been with this team a long time. Cleared wildly. Well, she's in school when she's not playing, and even when she is out here on soccer assignment, she does bring homework with her and brings assignments and keeps up that way. There's no one sending it in. <laughs> Another big strike there from Carl Lang, that one over top. She has got to have one of the most powerful strikes I've ever seen. Well, and she has shown it successfully here tonight. Booth stepping up. Cleared. Here's Nonan. Boyd. Here's Chapman. 
Right into the middle, and there's another one. She has the hat trick. You know, credit has to go to Christina Kiss for this one. Makes a beautiful run, taps that one nicely to Lang. Doesn't get selfish, doesn't try to score herself, but sees Lang in the middle there. Beautiful pass across, and Lang just connects nicely. Beautiful finish. Carl Lang's third goal of the evening coming in the 84th minute. And it's 8 0 Canada. And she wants more. <laughs> Amy Walsh can't get it through that time. And Ball and Timko, a guilty party in that case. And the crowd likes Carl Lang. Canada now with 19 goals in two games. Cleared by Boyd. More skill from these Canadian forwards into the middle again, and that one just off target by Sinclair. Christina Kiss really making an impact on that field. Beautiful little turn here, touches it across. Sinclair almost gets a foot on it or gets a foot on it, just goes a little bit wide, but uh, Christina Kiss really making an impact out there. Well, she's really been critical in the last two goals. She's been right there. She has made an impact, and here's somebody who hasn't been starting lately, and yet she comes on late and really makes her mark. Lang lets it go, Chapman. Walsh is there, can't get to it. She was beaten to it by Diana Hugh. Canada quick to recover to gain there on all the loose balls. Hermes making a run there. That's foiled. Here's Nonan. To Boyd. Chapman. Cleared. Unable to clear that time was Lewis. The result is Jamaica struggling right here in this play. Another call going Jamaica's way. Here's a look at that. And again, not really quite sure what the foul was. Another 50-50 ball, it appeared. Falconer in the opposite side. Another cold night in Victoria, but that hasn't stopped them from coming out, and they stay till the very end here, no matter what the score. In this case, 8 0. Cleared off of Candace Chapman there. Dying moments of this game. Canada will win, obviously, and then finish the round robin part of the tournament on Sunday afternoon against Costa Rica. The throw in there from Alicia James. 88th minute of play now. Stepping up was Falconer. Coming back once again is Timko. Trying to mess things up a little bit, but Jamaica gets a ball downfield, but again, it's rather hopeless. There's LeBlanc. Blanc and McLeod can have a conversation and compare notes about how to keep warm on a cold evening in Victoria with nothing to do. McLeod's turn of the other night and LeBlanc tonight. There's Lang getting called here and another rather unusual one, I think. You know, sometimes when females are playing, for some reason, contact isn't allowed, and that's just normal contact in a soccer game. Well, she won the ball. Called. Exactly. She simply came in and won the ball. Geneva Sinclair going down and getting the call. Booth steps forward.
Boyd has to go back, and she does successfully. Good skill by Brianna Boyd fighting off Jody Ann McGregor. Canada superior in every aspect of this game. Well, we talked about right off the top of the show about how Canada has been improving, and I think this just shows that the last time we played Jamaica it was three nothing, and now it's eight nothing. Canada has been improving over the last few years incredibly, and it just shows on the pitch. They are so strong. Chapman now. Are they done here as we approach the 90th minute, or have they got another one here? Timko takes a shot. Good save there by Thomas. Thomas has come out big sometimes this game, and uh, you know the score could be a lot higher, Jerry, if it wasn't for her. Hermes knocks it back into the middle. Look at this. This is a soccer game. 21 shots on target. Eight of them have gone in. Here's Chapman. Can she catch up to it? No, she can't. A goal kick for Jamaica. Nikeshi Thomas has actually made several good stops here tonight or this would really be out of hand. Not that it isn't already. Suzette Murray with the free kick. Two minutes of injury time to be added on here. Ladies and gentlemen, two minutes ahead of time. Well, the second half, Jerry, has been all Canada. They've completely dominated. They did in the first half, but Jamaica seemed to fight a little bit harder in that first half, but the second half has just been almost the entire half Canada. Here's Lang searching for another one. Thomas comes out to cover. So all that's left now for Canada before the semifinals is Costa Rica. Now Costa Rica defeated Jamaica by a score of 2-0. So you'd have to figure that Canada's chances against Costa Rica are pretty darn good. So how do you avoid looking ahead now? Possible date with Mexico in the semifinals, but everybody's thinking about Canada and the United States at the Rose Bowl. Mexico, though, should give Canada a much tougher battle. Here's Christine Sinclair. There's the cross. Thomas can't get out to it, and there it is again. Make it four for Cara Lang. What an absolutely beautiful ball across by Christine Sinclair. And look at that finish by Carl Lang. Finished like a pro. Connects beautifully. Doesn't put too much power behind it. And an ab perfect cross. The cross goes right over top of the last defender. Right to Carl Lang's foot as she's running. And that's just about the last play of this game. As surely... Referee Ave Maria Alpazar would blow the whistle, and she does that just now. Carl Lang with four goals here. One strike at the end of the first half, three more in the second half. Canada easily defeating Jamaica by a score of nine to nothing. They've scored 20 goals in two games. We will be back to wrap things up in just a moment.